today's episode is going to be about craftsmanship. I want to learn it, and I want to match that style on some new things we need to build for the boat. Come along for the ride while I learn how and show you what I learned. Hi, we live on a boat, so it's getting work done on it. Bye. Well, I think that summed it up really well. This is Gil from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's episode, we stepped the mast. It's been a long time coming. If you haven't seen that video, by all means, please do. Uh, I'll put a link right up here for it. Um, this week is all about craftsmanship. And I'll apologize up front for the uh, the lighting in this very opening intro scene. Everything else with the detail work will be good, uh, good lighting. But the first scene, I kind of goofed up. Hope you guys enjoy this week's video. Thanks. And I'm about to go and build frames for my old ports, uh, my, my windows, and I want them to look good. In our earlier videos, I've shown the joinery work that's on this boat. It's actually amazing. For example, there are hand-cut dovetail joints on the frames of the hatches, and all of the cabinetry down below has chiseled out places for the hinges so they close flush. Right? Beautiful work. The old frames that went around the ports on the actual coach house were pretty ugly, just thin strips of teak wood with bungs in them. I thought this is an opportunity to show some of that craftsmanship. You know, we got rid of a lot of teak on the boat by removing the teak decks, by fiberglassing over the coach house. Um, we really want to make sure we have some good accent pieces. It's the reason why we spent so much time on the wooden hatches and we left them ha uh, wood. And, and we're putting wooden handrails off of an old ship on the boat for hand grips. And we're going to put uh, wide teak frames around the ports uh, that are on the new white coach house. And the reason we're doing all that is because we really want to enhance the beauty of the boat. So instead of going back with something like this that has essentially just butt joints, you know, where these pieces come together, I really wanted to do something beautiful. So today I'm going to sketch out a few examples of how I might do a hand cut dovetail joint. Um, and I'm going to practice it on some pine because before I go buy that expensive teak, I want to practice it on the pine and make sure it looks good. So follow along. Let me show you what we're doing. So this is going to start pretty easy. I'm just going to make a couple of small pieces that simulate what a joint might look like on this. Essentially, I'm going to sketch this out a little bit wider than the actual um, piece. And I think I'm wanting to do something about two and a half inches wide or so. Uh, kind of gives me what the inside of this might look like. And then I'm going to do the same on this side just to see what it would look like because we have different angles. All right, so if this is going to be essentially one piece of wood, and what I would do is I would cut this length. I'm just going to zigzag this because this would be whatever the length of the port is. Uh, and then the same thing here. This is whatever the length of the port is down to the bottom. But I'm trying to think of the different joints that I might make here. One option is to essentially do, um, you know, let's say these are the two pieces. Essentially what I would do is create a dovetail like this flush edge here, flush edge there, and then this part would be part of this piece. And then it would be a void out of this one, and the two would fit together. In order to do that, I have to make sure that this remains uh, 90 degrees. Otherwise, I could potentially have a tough time getting the angles right there. That's one option. The other option I was thinking was something maybe a little bit, a little bit fancier. Because the grain would be going this way, as it curves down here, this section would be weak and susceptible to crack. So I thought about doing something a little bit more interesting here. For example, do something like that. That could be an interesting joint. I keep these at two angles the same. Actually, now that I'm looking at that, that looks kind of funny. And that would give me a nice straight edge that I could cut and route and sand so it would look like one beautiful piece. And I think this would give it a really nice look to that wood. One, it would help strengthen this joint. Yeah, it would definitely help strengthen this frame as opposed to just a, a simple, you know, a simple butt joint where the two of them are stuck together like it was before. And I think it'll match the aesthetics of the rest of the boat. So I think I like this. I like this style here. This is going to give me an opportunity to learn a little bit of craftsmanship. And yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Let's, uh, I'm looking forward to it now. Let me put it on the wood and then we'll see if I still think I'm decent enough at it or not.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this angle here. Because this is an odd one, right? This is actually not a complete square window. It has a funny angle here. It's longer on this side than it is that side. It's sort of a trapezoid on this side here. Just like I did before, I'll put the window at an inch away from this. Two and a quarter to here. Two and a quarter to here. Two and a quarter to here. And same thing right up here again. With these all marked, we're gonna go ahead and go to the bandsaw and get this thing cut up. So I'm just going to give it a quick, uh, a quick trim here, and then I'll go do the rest of it on the bandsaw. And these pieces are essentially going to sit like this. Essentially like that and like that, and then this piece will go right here. Yeah, so gives us an idea on how all this is going to fit together. Safety first. I'm not always good about that with dust masks and whatnot, but on the bandsaw, I typically, typically wear the safety goggles. So I'm going to go ahead and change the blade on this to something a little thinner. Uh, I haven't bought a new blade in this for this thing in years, so we'll uh, we'll give it its best shot here. First thing is I've got to remove the blade pin. Ah, let's get this thing opened up. Guide out. Open my door. I'm trying to remember all the little things I have to do here. Might have just been about it. We brushing blade, and then it's a matter of loosening her up. That's getting looser, that's good. All right, so I went ahead and loosened that one. This is always an interesting trick here. So what we're gonna do is take the blade off the top and kind of come around this side over here. And take it all the way along this side as straight as we can out of the guides down here. All right, once it's out of the guides, just a matter of taking this out of that, turning it, and coming right out the slot the side of the table. Now we've got our blade off here. <laughs> this is always interesting, try and fold these boogers. Let's see if we can get this done. It's a little easier on the small ones than it is on the big ones. There we go. And we've got a three-coiled bandsaw blade. Now we'll put the thin one in, and again, just like the other one, Essentially want to hold the two sides and let her pop out. There we go. And we just reverse the orders. Let's come back over here again and work on cutting it. We should be able to cut a much better radius now. All right, so we've got our top. We've got our bottom. That looks pretty good. So now it's just a matter of getting this angled piece here. All right, so that is lined up. So now I'm gonna trace in here. Basically, I'm just going to follow the contour of this outer edge. Let me scoot this down a little bit. 
complete my line here for the outer edge. There to there. So this is the piece I want right here. An interesting thing is, if you think about this, when I make this edge, I don't want this to be 100% square. I actually want this to be at a slight angle. I'm drawing it at an exaggeration there because I want it to be thinner at the bottom than it is at the top. It should make it go in nice here. And if the fibers at the top have to compress just a little bit to fit tightly into that, it should give us a nice tight looking joint there. That's the thought at least. Let's go get this piece cut out All right, so as you can see, that went in too easy. What that tells me is I, um, I didn't do a great job of making that tight. Remember I was saying I want these to be at an angle, an exaggerated angle this way, almost like this. That way these would have wedged in there. So when I make this, my next one, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make those wider. And that way I can use a slight chisel to chisel that down a little bit. But I think all in all that looks pretty good. All right, so just like before we are going to Get this lined up here. I'm leaving the window on it just because I'm eyeballing whether this sits in the middle of the frame or not. And this is a great example. You can see here where I have these two too close together. So I need to get this to where that's one inch apart on my marks. It's time to repeat our process. I'm gonna see if I can make this one a little tighter this time. We'll cut it out. I like the way that um, the dovetail looks from an aesthetics perspective. Uh, the approximate size and width of the wood look pretty good on the boat. You'll see in a minute, I'll, uh, I'll actually try that on the boat just to get a sense for whether it looked decent. Obviously when I do this antique, I have some uh, improvement I need to do on my craftsmanship. Uh, those dovetail joints weren't tight enough. As a matter of fact, the second one, I didn't show all the footage of this just because we did several of these, but, but the second joint I made, I made a lot tighter and I used a mallet to tap it in and just carrying it back to the boat, I actually broke one of the tabs off. So it was too tight. So I definitely have some work to do. I'll also epoxy this when I actually go to do it. So it's going to be a solid piece. And then I will route both of the edges round it over so it looks very good. So that's kind of the plan. Um, take a look. Here's what it looks like on the front of the boat. And the good news is I like the look. I think that's the way I'm going to do all the ports. That's a lot of work ahead of me using real teak though. to be greeted by a big old rainbow today. I saw a pecker one. A pecker one? Where did you see it? On the swing. Yeah? Right oh. now. A woodpecker? Yes. Good Saturday morning. So McKinley and I had our date day today and she wanted to come down to the boat with me. So we, we knew we had a lot of little things to try and get done. I wanted to bed a few of those newly varnished parts on top of the boat. Um, I wanted to see if I could finish sanding a couple more spindles today. Uh, I needed to get some longer um, bolts and screws to go through the gunnel where I drilled the holes for the stanchion paces. So a lot of little things to get done, but Murphy's Law. We got down here, I went and bought one bolt so I could see the size and if it would work okay. And of course, as soon as we got to the boat, it started raining. So the other thing I was thinking of doing today was putting a coat of varnish on the boom. That's out now too. So we're down below, uh, waiting for the rain to pass, and um, I'll show you what we're up to. Hi, I am making cake. You're making cake? What do you have on top? Strawberries on one piece and whipped cream on the other? Yeah. Can you cut me a slice? Yeah. It's gonna be strawberry. Awesome. <laughs> Love strawberry, right? I do love strawberries. Is that one mine? Yep. The strawberry it. Let me see. <laughs> that yeah, looks yeah. pretty good. Because I love the cream. You do? And I love blackberries. Blackberries and whipped cream? That's quite a combo, huh? 
So, let's see, you're sitting on an old cushion yeah. next to the vacuum, playing with some toys waiting for the rain to go by, huh? Yeah. All right. We'll go back up top in a minute. So while it rains, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of polishing. I showed a little bit of this stuff a couple of weeks ago when I started polishing the brackets for the handrails. Uh, I've got them right here. So I figure while it's raining, I can get a towel and start polishing these up. And um, that will allow me to start figuring out where I'm going to mount these up on the coach house roof. Uh, they're essentially going to be the handholds. So when you're walking up front, you have something to grab onto. So I'll put a link to this stuff down below. Um, it's truly amazing. If you haven't tried this stuff, give it a shot. Um, I won't video me polishing them but when i get done i'll show you the before and the after and i'll kind of talk about how long it took to do each one but it's pretty effortless uh, you know you put a little bit on the product you rub it with a towel um, if it's a little bit pitted or a little bit nasty you maybe put it on a second time let it sit for a few minutes and then basically wipe it off um, you know for bigger metal pieces like a stanchion um, rail or a turnbuckle you know i've kind of put two ends around it and pulled back and forth like a shoe shine would do over the top of a shoe it, it truly is amazing, mirror-like finish. So I'll show you the before and after here in a few minutes. I know the lighting is not great on these, but I wanted to just show you. So, I mean, it, it's pretty amazing the difference this stuff makes. I'm going to kind of go close up to it. You know, for what they were, these things are... These things are 50 or 60 years old from an old ship in Indonesia. That's pretty cool. All right, I just ran to West Marine. Um, bolts, four-inch bolt. Um, I think these are, was it three? I can't remember. I think a buck 89 or something like that per bolt. I'm talking about $120 just to screw the stanchions in. And that doesn't include the acorn nuts and all the washers. So I bought two just to make sure these are the right size. And then I'll go online and I'll buy them elsewhere. But let's see how well these things fit. I ain't going to believe this. So I had originally had this one. It worked fine. Then I went and bought this one, also four inches. It looks like it's actually a little shorter than four inches. Not quite enough to grab it at the end of it. So what I really need is something like four and a quarter. Because I'm trying to use these acorn nuts with the decorative ends on them, I only have about a quarter inch of depth on that. So I can't go more than about a four and a quarter inch long bolt. Otherwise, it thinks I'm going to tighten up. Huh. Crazy. So I can't seem to buy anything other than a four inch or five inch at my local West Marine or hardware store. So I'm gonna look online and see what I can find there. Very frustrating though, very frustrating. Hopefully I can get it shipped next day or, or find a local source or provider because frankly at this point I'm holding Nick up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's video on uh, dovetail joints and how to make them. Uh, certainly when we redo this antique, I'll record all that as well, and hopefully I do a little bit better at it. Uh, when they get rounded over and sanded, they'll look real good, epoxied, and I'll, uh, I'll get all that filmed as well. But this was really just about trying something I never tried before, and I didn't want to try it in expensive teak. I uh, really wanted to see what it looked like in pine. I'll probably end up making one or two more of these just to get the exact template down. But ironically enough, the challenge is every one of these ports is slightly different. The two aft ones on either port and starboard side are very close, but not identical. So um, I'll probably make those two match, the two forward starboard and port match, and then the two on the very front of the coach house. I'll make the, the, um, the frames the same size, but there'll be a quarter inch off on the inside from the, from the actual uh, glass size. But I think that'll be okay. As long as they're evenly placed on the boat, it should look really good. So see y'all next week. Huh? Everybody, bye on Facebook. What? <laughs>